This episode, I've got some paperwork here, official paperwork, on who pays the price increase and by how much on all the new Toyotas. We fit up these 35, 12 and a half, 17 Kumo MT 71s. More updates out of Brian's on the latest bullet truck mission. Precautions moving forward to stop this happening in the future. We take a look at shock lengths in the rear of the 79. Wow, there's not much is there? That's full extension. We will start here at Nick's. He's got the rims and I've taken delivery of the tires. We'll leave them here for him to fit up at his own pace. Got the call from the boys. My shoes are in. Got Millie with us today. Hello. And off to Car Tech we go. They balanced up nicely. Zero, zero, all four of them. And a successful road test. We've run the Kumo MT71s before on the 79 but they were on a 285.75.16s. They were a good tyre for the testing that we did, but just a bit small for mind for a truck of this size. Air down. I felt like I wasn't getting the clearance that I wanted, and I was getting caught up on the undercarriage. They're sitting under the LM106 now. They're a perfect size for how that truck's set up. I'm able to air them down just that little bit more on the lighter truck. And traction is at a maximum on that one at about 16 PSI. What a difference it's made to the stance. So the rear rims are a neg 55, so it's well and truly fixed the track offset. The only problem I see is that we're gonna have to move the mud flaps, not only out, but back. So a neg 50 would have been spot on but these 17 by 8s come in a neg 55 which is fine it's an extra five mil now now the fronts are only a zero they sit nice and legal inside the guard now twice on the gray truck our rear wheel bearings look like this bad now to prevent this moving forward with the big offset rim every 20k we're going to get in here and replace the bearings. Now I use genuine bearings and racers when I do come in here for that interval change. Kids motorbike round. Official scores coming out of the last point score, the enduro round. It was a beautiful sunny day here today. Tracks still had a bit of mud on them, or just enough for us to still have to clean the bikes when we got home. Check out this little battle here. That was close. Nicholas has a couple of riders, and when they come together, it brings out the best in all of them. He took out the first place medal with five firsts and a second out of his six races. <laughs> Amelia on a Husky. Now every ride day, I always get comments from parents and coaches saying how good a stance and how good a rider she's becoming. As all riders, moving into the 65 class, they do all start down in C grade. She took out third place with five third places out of her six races. Back to the 79. We've just got to move these mud flaps. Now with the Toyota trays, it's all modular. You've got multiple holes which you can adjust and I can bring the whole frame out a little bit. Out and back would be perfect. Otherwise we'll be touching that for sure. The only thing I hate about the GVM upgrade rear springs is how thick that pack is and how close the bottom of that shock is to the ground. It's, it's lower than the diff center. I need to rectify that. I've taken the front mud flaps off and I probably should ramp it just to make sure that we don't scrub anywhere. Now these are a three inch coil done by TJM in their pre-rego work. Now with the caster correction, the diff should be in the factory position. And what I mean by that is if you put a three inch lift on a factory caster bush, it tries to pull the front diff back. Then you put a big shoe on, so the back of that guard becomes vulnerable to that edge of the tire. So you can see there that the bolt goes not through the center, but up higher. Now that corrects the caster after such a big lift. So with the four bolts undone, we're looking to go back and across. 
So we will have to notch it out just there so it comes out and makes us legal. So it looks as though it won't come out because this bracket is hitting the edge of the angle up there. So what I'll do is I'll flip that around. It really is like playing Meccano. So that's how the bracket was. So we go front to back, reverse it, turn it around. So now the mud flap can come out past the tire. So turning it around has allowed the whole frame to come out. So now we're in line with that tire. Bit of bullet truck news here. Chopping time. What could possibly go wrong? Now the reason he's recessing that spring perch is with this bigger 80 series housing. We still want to keep the bottom of the leaf spring as low as possible with just the height needed for everything to clear in the steering. So here he sets it up. He has a center bolt drilled in the location that we require for where the diff's mounted now on the LM106 housing. Now the passenger side, because the shape of the housing, it needs only a little bit taken off to sit level with the driver's side. I look here from the inside of the housing at the driver's side plate that he cut out. Having a look there that it's all welded up. And look how he's designed the U-bolts to hold the spring pack. This really is gonna be a one of a kind setup. An 80 housing under an LM106 on leaf springs, roughs, hydro assist, and lots of other unique ideas. The man is a genius. Remember the word custom, the meaning does not fit. Here he is reaming the taper for the tie rod end. Okay. Back to that mud flap relocation. Passenger side, I was governed by the water tank, but it still worked out awesome. Road trip. We're off to pick these bad boys up. And while we're at it, we'll check out the fuel consumption now on the 35s. Get to use my spotties too on this run. Back in at the local BP, we'll fill up. So we're sitting about 10% out. So 90 on the speedo is reading 100 on the GPS. Now I must pay attention to that driving around at home, especially in the school zones. That 10% at the low end could mean the difference between doing 40 in a school zone and a ticket. And geez, the tyres feel beautiful. They did a great job with the balancing. Bullet's trailer weighs about 750 kilos, so this is a pretty big climb heading down south. I have had to gear back, but don't forget, this motor is stock, apart from that catch can on 35s now, and also too, I don't even have a snorkel hooked up, so it's breathing the hot air out of the engine bay at the moment. So it's gonna be interesting to see what the fuel consumption is gonna be like, because I am gonna push to keep the speed limit with the trailer in tow. And then we'll throw a couple hundred more kilos on it when we pick the diffs up. And then coming back, I'll be pushing as well. We're not gonna do any work to the motor before we head away. So we'll have the Jayco in tow, which is gonna be a little bit heavier than what we're towing here today. So that's basically 110K an hour at 2000 RPM on the 35s with the speedo reading 100. Meanwhile, doing a burn. Hit a hill, back to fourth. Still doing 100 because we're out on the speedo. Uh, but the taco's gone up to 2,500 now. So I'm about to go back into fifth. Fourth's done its job. So the gearing is beautiful on the 35s. I remember years ago, we used to go down to Yowl nearly every weekend from Sydney. Back in the early model Hiluxes. Geez, we'd struggle up and down these hills. I think I held the record nine weekends in a row out of the group. Been going at it an hour now, and I'm really happy with the stock motor and the power that it's showing me on the 35s. Really happy. Can't get a better test than Mount Oosley. We've got the diffs in the back now, so we're a couple hundred kilos heavier. Back to third, but still holding the speed limit. So I'm back and forward, fourth to third, with about a ton being towed. Fourth will hold the speed limit, but the RPM's quite low. Third will hold it better, but the RPM's quite high. But all in all, very happy. But this purchase was mainly thought about for spares. So we do have one rear axle. Now we have a pair. We have a pair of discs for the rear. We have calipers for the rear. Fronts, we've got 
CVs now, we've got calipers, we've got discs. So these were set up for a HJ75. So they sprung this over, as you can see here, with the RHS blocks. This must have been a tall unit. Now 80 series diffs sprung over 75. So you got the width and then obviously you got the spring over. Now the ratios we're not sure of. We're definitely gonna be looking at selling these housings. So 80 series housings set up to bolt onto a 75 for a spring over. So the numbers, 7.26 kilometers per one liter of diesel. So in the old way, that's 13.77 litres per 100 kilometres. I think that's fair numbers for a big V8 on 35 inch tyres. That bit of a document that I was sent shows the cost increases across the whole Toyota range. And the particular sentence I want to bring to our attention is the COSI protection policy has been discontinued effective May 16, 2022. Now this therefore means any order taken after May 16 and planned for delivery after January 1 will not be COSI protected from this GPI. So a lot of abbreviations there, but COSI purely means customer order sales information and GPI is the general price increase. Another thing that's really been bugging me, remember a couple of videos back, we donated these Bilsteins to Bullet Truck a really good shock, they worked awesome at Woodpecker. They were supposed to be for the back of this truck. While I've got the tools out, I'm going to unbolt the bottom of that shock and just see how much down travel I'm actually getting with these TJM shocks. So the front end, remember earlier in the year on our first off-road test, we realised the front end struggled to droop on that TJM GVM upgrade suspension kit. A few phone calls, to an old mate of mine, Cal, from Cal Off-Road. A set of Bilsteins got sent up for us that really fixed that front end. We ended up getting another 50 odd mil of travel and I love that front end. Now the rear end, to be honest, I really wasn't unhappy with how it was going. Looking at the body of this shock, you wouldn't assume that it'll droop much. Now these are a heavy springs. It's a GVM upgrade rear spring, but I'm actually happy with the flex I'm getting. But I just wonder how much shock I've actually got. Wow. It's not much, is there? That's full extension. Also, too, this shock's a bit different to what I'm used to. I'm used to the rubber sitting over that. This has got a steel collar inside. So there's a bush and then there's the shock body. Look out, bullet. You may be losing those front shocks, at least for the upcoming trip. Next episode. Our first run on the 35s off-road. We fit the new snorkel that we've been waiting for. And we sort out those rear shock lengths. As always, thanks for watching.